Hey there, future physicists. Uh, welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into the fascinating world of distance time and speed time graphs. So an introduction to some of the various motion graphs you'll meet in your journey across physics, mechanics, stuff like that. Two of the most powerful tools to help us understand the motion of objects, whether you're studying for your A-levels or just curious about the wonders of physics, um you're in for a treat so let's start with distance time graphs here okay so imagine you're plotting the journey of a car on a graph with distance here on the vertical axis and we've got time here on the horizontal axis as the car moves you mark its position on the graph at different time intervals as we're moving along and the resulting line will on the graph will show how the distance travels how the distance chain and um, is traveled changes over time okay so let's sort of get into this now let's talk about what these graphs can tell us okay so first we'll just kind of talk about these shapes here and then we'll get into the mathematics behind them so you don't have to get yourself in a mindset of memorizing shapes because i think that's always um foolish missing the point and leaving yourself prone for misremembering right so here i've got a horizontal line on a distance time graph meaning it's not moving i think that's really easy to see because as time's progressing distance is not changing so we're not moving it's a stationary body okay a steeper line here so a line which has a gradient value I can see that the distance is increasing over time. The distance is also increasing over time at a constant rate, represented by that constant gradient. So that's something that's moving at a constant speed, that is something that's moving at uniform motion, All right? Now here what I can see is I can see my distance is increasing over time, but the amount of distance that I cover in a time is increasing and increasing and increasing, right? So the rate of speed is increasing. The meters per second per second is increasing. So what I've got represented here is an object which is, an ex is accelerating. I can see the opposite over here. I'm covering a large distance in a small amount of time, and then I'm covering a small distance. In a longer amount of time, the speed is decreasing. I am decelerating. So, kind of talking through the graphs like that and coming towards the conclusions like that, I think is a really useful skill to have. And I think it's the way to approach not only, you know, distance time graphs, speed time graphs, but just graphs in general. And moving away from like a curvy graph means it accelerates. Now, there's no such thing as a curvy graph right a line can be you know curving tending towards an exponential or whatever but the graph isn't curvy right the graph isn't going fast so i would i try and move away from those those ways of speaking about it the graph's going fast the graph is curvy and move towards oh hey the gradient is increasing the gradient is constant the gradient is zero and then think about what the gradient represents so let's kind of go into my thought process about how I do that. So I think about what a gradient is. A gradient is the change in y and change in x, all right? So your gradient is a change in y and change in x. So what I think about is I, you know, I write this down. I write down next to my graph, m equals change in y over change in x. Then I simply substitute the y and the x in. In this case, the y was distance. In this case, the x was time when you look at the axes of the graph right so what's that give me that gives me a gradient of speed right because the change in y is the change in distance the change in x is the change in time so that means the m the gradient is speed so now that i know that i can go back to those graphs and i can re-explain them with kind of that mathematical you know y equals mx plus c straight line function basis i can look at these again and i've got in my mind oh i know m equals equals speed i know the gradient is speed and then i can just go into describing the graphs in the same way as i would describe any graph 
I look at this graph here, before I even look at the axes, I know it has no gradient. So the way I talk about that graph, the way I think about that graph and then communicate it, because remember, that's your job as a physicist, is just being able to communicate these ideas. I look at that and I communicate this body, yeah, this car, whatever the hell it is, there is a gradient of zero on the graph, meaning there is no speed, meaning it is a stationary object. So this real nice cause and effect, instead of just like jumping to a conclusion that maybe you've already remembered or internalized, I like to do the full rep, the full repetition of the thought, just to kind of help me out for future more complex situations because I've built up that modality of thinking, then I can then go apply it to unknown graphs or situations I'm less familiar with and less comfortable with. And I've just got this system in place and you can't go wrong, right? I look at the next one here. Oh, this has a constant gradient. So the gradient has a value. Okay, it has a constant gradient. I could say that about any graph that looks like this, even if I don't understand the implications of what the x and the y axis means, even if I don't even understand the units of the x and the y axis, I can look at a graph like that and say it's got a constant gradient. And so what can I say? This one, I do understand what the gradient means because I've gone change y, change an x, distance over time, speed, gradient equals speed. Gradient is constant, speed is constant, uniform motion. Boom. Apply the same thinking every time. Oh, what's going on over here? I start off with a low gradient. I end up with a high gradient, represented by the steepness of the line. I don't even have to do any calculations. I can see that. That's the point of graphs. It's a graphical tool. I can look at the image, right? And then if I need to, I can dive into the calculations or whatever. But I'm looking at that image there. I've got a low gradient. I go to a high gradient. Oh, okay, so gradient is increasing. Oh, and I know in this concept, context, when it's d and t, y over x, d over t, I know that my m represents speed. So what's going on in this graph? This graph is showing me an object with increasing speed. This graph is showing me an accelerating object. So full wrap there. I'm going through everything. I'm going through everything. I'm going through the process of saying the gradient is increasing. The gradient is speed. So speed is increasing so object is accelerating full rep full rep every time every time and that will get instantaneous that will get instantaneous we don't want to remember stuff man don't even remember it. there's no point in remembering stuff that's in books okay what we want to do is we want to train our brain to think and conclude okay because that's that's something that you can do a lot better than a book right Next one here, what's going on? I start off with a high gradient, I go to a decreasing gradient, full rep. Gradient is decreasing. Gradient is speed. Speed is decreasing. Object is decelerating. Or object is negatively accelerating, however you want to communicate that. Full rep every single time. Even for really simple concepts like this, because you're building up the modality of thinking okay you're not just trying to remember facts about speed and time and, and whatever all right you're trying to build up a modality of thinking that you can use in other situations that's the scale that's the skill you can apply to other things beyond just hey i'm learning a motion topic about these specific graphs all right that's small time we're thinking bigger than that we're projecting further Let's talk about next up speed time graphs. So instead of plotting distance against time, we're plotting speed against time. So on the vertical axis, we have speed. On the x axis, we still have time. Okay? So if you're just somebody who remembers shapes, you look at this and you go, oh, constant speed. No, right? That's one of the traps of just remembering these shapes and jumping into that. Do the full rep just like before right do the full rep just like before all right because we're going to see the same types of motion right as the object accelerates decelerates or maintains a constant speed we're going to mark its speed at different time intervals along this graph um 
So to interpret this correctly and build up that modality of thinking, build up that system, which we can uh, just like deploy on future unknown situations and unfamiliar situations, we'll do the full wrap again. So we go back, we go back to this. We look at this. What is a gradient? A gradient's a change in y, a change in x. Okay. What is the y in this context? Speed. Okay. What is the x in this context? Time. What's speed divided by time? That's going to give you the magnitude of acceleration, right? That's going to give you the magnitude of acceleration. So what can we do now? Well, what we can do now is we can revisit those same graph shapes, but interpret them as if it was a speed time axis. So I brought over those same ones. All right, so let's call this speed. Oops, I left distance here. Let's call these speed, speed, speed. And right, and let's interpret these graphs. A horizontal line on a speed time graph means the object's maintaining a constant speed. A line sloping upwards, like we got over here, indicates acceleration. The object is speeding up. But that's not facts we need to remember because we've got a system, we've got a modality of thinking to just conclude that, right? I look at this first graph here, okay? First graph over here. What have I got? I've got no gradient. Okay, so I've got no gradient here. What does that mean? Well, 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 let's go back to our change from I would change next. I know the gradient in this context gives me the magnitude of the acceleration. So, no gradient, no acceleration. All right. Now, something's not accelerating. That means either two things happening. It means either it's at a constant speed or it's constantly stationary because that constant speed could be zero. So I need to look at this graph. Oh, look, it has a value for speed. It's traveling at a constant speed. If I had a line across here on the bottom, no gradient, meaning no acceleration. No speed value because it's it's on y equals zero. That means it's stationary. So sometimes you've got to look at a little, little bit more information as well. Let's look at this one here. Oh, it's got an m value. M is a number, and that m is constant. The gradient is constant. That means the gradient is acceleration. Constant acceleration. Cool. You can apply it to these other ones here. Okay. Gradient is increasing. Gradient is acceleration. Object is increasing in its acceleration. It's known as a jerk. It's got a jerk, right? So in that one there, increasing gradient, gradient is acceleration. Acceleration is increasing. This one here, I start off steep, I get low. Gradient is decreasing. Gradient is acceleration. Acceleration is decreasing. Simple. Just apply that modality of thinking and keep doing that. Do full reps every single time. Yeah? You might be like, oh, I can just skip to the end because I remember the shapes. Cool. You can skip to the end on these examples. We're thinking bigger than that. We want to set up our thinking. So we can apply this to anything. So you can look at any graph and you go, gradient is this, gradient represents this, so this. Boom. And you can do that for absolutely anything. That's training your mind. That's changing your thinking uh, to start to be able to understand and apply and solve unknown physics problems instead of just being a guy or a girl who's remembered a lot of physics, because you're not going to be able to remember all of the physics, right? So, there we go. Distance time and speed time graphs are invaluable tools for analyzing motion and understanding how objects move in the world around us. By mastering these concepts, importantly, you know, there's, there's concepts of talking about the gradient and communicating what the gradient represents. 
you'll unlock a whole new um, level of insight into the wonders of physics. And that wraps up today's lesson. I hope you found it helpful. Keep practicing, stay curious, and remember physics is all around us. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd appreciate it. If you've got any questions or anything you'd like to um, me to cover or com uh, comments, simply put those in the comments below. If you look in the description, I've got a bunch of links to all of my different socials where I post different physics and places where you can get resources for practicing your physics. Bye-bye.